everybody, it's Blake here with Gorilla Zen Fitness. I received a request a couple weeks ago to make a video on rectus femoris pain and inflammation, so today I'm going to address that. While I have not had much experience with this condition myself or with my clients, I'm going to do my best to uh, share my ideas and some strategies with you. For those of you that don't know, the rectus femoris is a muscle in the thigh that basically runs from the uh, hip straight down the center of the thigh down to the knee. Now this is a hip flexor muscle, so it has a lot of different roles. One is to extend the knee to straighten out the leg. Uh, the other one is to flex the hip, which means pull the, uh, the, the leg bone up. So uh, I've talked about this many times before, but when you're sitting, the hip flexor group of muscles get tight and the rectus femoris is just one of those. So just bear that in mind as I move forward here. So usually rectus femoris pain is a overuse injury. It's usually too tight, already too tight and overactive, caused by some sort of lifestyle um, you know, factor, either sitting too much or cycling too much. It's really common in cyclists. Uh, but we'll just say sitting right now is a huge uh, contributor to it. And guess what? That's the first way that you can address it. Really, I talked about this before, but look into getting a standing desk, something that doesn't require you to sit with your hips in a flex position for multiple hours during the workday. You can buy them on Amazon, so check them out there. Here are some other things that you can do. One is going to be smashing the uh, rectus femoris with either a softball or a foam roller. I forgot to mention earlier, if you suspect that your rectus femoris pain is caused from overstretching of the rectus femoris, so a long rectus femoris, then I would not recommend that you uh, do these exercises on the rectus femoris, but instead address the hamstrings, which I'll get to in a minute. But for this, I really like to use a softball instead of a foam roller, just because it gets in there better, but you can also use a foam roller for this, but it's very basic. Just uh, put the softball basically right on top of the thigh, and then just work your way down to just above your kneecap, okay? This can be very, very painful, and just because of that, you might want to just start with a foam roller first off. Two is going to be performing both a dynamic and static stretch for the rectus femoris. This is a static rectus femoris stretch. This is very, very intense, so use it with caution. But basically what you do is you put, you're going to prop one leg up on a bench, and you're going to put that knee down. You're gonna take your other leg that you're not stretching and plant that out in front of you. You're gonna squeeze the butt cheek on the side that you're uh, stretching and then raise that arm up, okay? I did uh, legs yesterday and this is very, very painful in the rectus femoris. A variation of that that's a little bit more dynamic is uh, this. Basically, you get into a lunge like that, keep this leg straight, raise, come back. Squeezing the butt cheek the whole time, okay? That's just a generic hip flexor uh, stretch that you can do that also activates the glutes. It's a really good thing to do before doing squats, especially if you've been sitting. Now, another area that we're gonna look at that's not, not so common is the hamstrings. So like I said earlier, one of the functions of the uh, rectus femoris is to extend the knee out straight, okay? One of the, the functions of the hamstrings are to flex the knee, to pull the knee into flexion, so make it bend. If your hamstrings are super, super, super tight, um, basically they're gonna make the rectus femoris work extra hard just to walk with a straight leg, which can cause tightness in the rectus femoris. So tightness behind your leg can cause tightness in front of your leg. If your rectus femoris is tight and you suspect that it could be because of your tight hamstrings, then here are a few things you can do. One is smash your hamstrings with a softball. So we're gonna release the hamstrings the same way with the softball here. For this, I would just recommend always resorting to the softball just because using a foam roller on the hamstrings is, is just not very effective. So basically put the ball underneath your leg, stack your leg on top of it. Maybe you can even like push down, add some pressure, stack your legs, whatever you wanna do. but. Search around in there, look for those hot spots, come all the way up to your butt bone here called your ischium, and then all the way back down just behind your knee. I also forgot to mention that with each of these uh, exercises, you wanna be doing it for about at the minimum of three sets of 30 seconds. Two is doing a neuromuscular stretch, also known as a contract and relax stretch for the hamstrings. So this is a stretch for the hamstrings that I've showed in the past um, that's really, really effective. So it's basically called a contract and relax stretch. It's also known as a neuromuscular stretch, but essentially what you do is you raise one leg up, grab behind the uh, calf here, and then you kick down with your leg that way, okay? And what you do is you block it with your hands. Okay, so kick, 
but you don't let it move because you're blocking it with your hands. And then after you've kicked for about six seconds or so, relax and pull the leg a little bit deeper. Kick, five seconds or so, relax, pull it deeper. Okay, go through a uh, series of waves like that. Do that for about six times on each leg and you should dramatically release the hamstring and improve range of motion. Note here that if your hamstrings are super, super, super tight, then you might wanna start with uh, you know, addressing the hamstrings before you even look at the rectus femoris and see if that resolves your pain. I really hope these exercises helped you out. If you enjoyed this video, then go ahead and subscribe over here. Other than that, I'll see you next time.